What's up, everybody? It's JT Sports back to you guys with another video, and I'm here with my NFL Week 1 preseason preview, previewing the Dallas Cowboys versus the San Francisco 49ers. Now, before I begin, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel below NFL videos and NFL content. So, in this Dallas Cowboys, San Francisco 49ers preseason preview, I'm just going to be going over some things to watch for during this game and some players to watch for both teams. So, some things to watch out of this game, you definitely want to keep an eye on the young rookie wide receivers that the 49ers have. They have a couple of guys. They have Jalen Hurd. You got Debo Samuel there. Just name a couple of guys. And they have a lot of young wide receivers on this roster. And in this game, I'm eager to see what these young receivers do and able to build themselves some confidence as we near week one of the NFL season. Because the big thing about being a rookie is that Rookie wide receivers are really, really inconsistent. So I think that it's a very big part that the 49ers rookie wide outs build some confidence going into the season. So I think it's really important that they come out here and have a pretty solid performance and a couple of these preseason games as we near the season. And they look to gain some momentum as we near week one because week one is right around the corner. We're literally three weeks away. So these rookie wide outs, I think they need to come out here, make a couple of plays and build up their confidence in a couple of these preseason games. Next up, the halfbacks or the 49ers. The 49ers probably have the best group and the deepest group of halfbacks out of every team in the NFL. They have Matt Breida. You got McKinnon there. You got Telvin Coleman. I mean, these guys are deep at that halfback position. And I think these next two preseason games are going to be really important because all of these halfbacks are pretty good, pretty solid material when it comes to starting on the NFL roster. But the thing is, you only have so many limited roster spots. So when these guys are going to end up getting traded or they're going to have to end up getting released. And it's really hard to see all these halfbacks making a roster. So some of these guys are going to end up getting released. And not because they're bad, it's just because you only have so many roster spots. And I mean, you... They have to have some roster spots for some other positions, so they're going to have to release some of these halfbacks. This is one of the most talented halfback groups in all of football, in my opinion, the best halfback group in all of football, just when you look at how deep they are at the halfback position. I mean, they have like one, two, three, four guys who at some point in the season started a couple of games for the 49ers, so I mean, they are extremely deep at that halfback position, so it's eager to see which of these halfbacks come out here, have a good performance, and which one of these halfbacks they end up trading for trade material, get them a couple of late round draft picks, like a six or seven round pick, or which one of these halfbacks ends up hitting free agency, because whichever one of these halfbacks ends up getting released, they're definitely going to be on another team by the time the week one of the 2019 NFL season begins. Now I'm watching the backup quarterback um, battle for the 49ers. You got Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard. Both of these guys started games for the 49ers during some time. And both of these guys were pretty serviceable starters when they were filling in for Jimmy Garoppolo. Nick Mullins, he was really, he was really a big surprise. He was a guy who was a third-string quarterback. And nobody really knew who he was, and he came out and had a big Thursday night game versus the Oakland Raiders. You know, I don't know how legitimate you can say that game was since the Oakland Raiders' secondary is trash, but we still got to give him credit where credit is due. I mean, Nick Mullins, this guy has been balling out so far during training camp or during the offseason for the 49ers. Then C.J. Beathard, he was a guy who was a pretty serviceable starter before he ended up going down for injury last season so both of these guys could end up being pretty good backups and i wouldn't be surprised if the 49ers ended up getting a trade for one of these guys to be a backup on another team because both of these guys are pretty serviceable backups so i want to be interested to see who ends up winning that backup quarterback spot this season for the 49ers and it all starts in this game here now for the dallas cowboys we definitely got to keep our eye on that halfback position for the Dallas Cowboys because we don't even know if Ezekiel Elliott is even going to end up 
showing up for the regular season when week one begins. So it's really important that we keep our eye on that. Then the defensive line for the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys have a lot of guys on that defensive line. So it's I'm really eager to see some of the depth guys who they have in this game. Now some things to watch for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm watching the halfbacks Mike Weber, Alfred Morris. Mike Weber, the rookie out of, out of Ohio State, very powerful back. Has a very solid build. He's very powerful. And I'm eager to see if he's going to be able to kind of submit his role in this halfback position battle if Ezekiel Elliott doesn't show up. I think he might be a little bit underrated in this battle. I think he could end up having a pretty solid contribution for the Cowboys. Then Alfred Morris. Alfred Morris was pretty solid for the Dallas Cowboys a couple of seasons ago, but nobody really knows how good he's going to be this year. But we can only suppose he'll be pretty solid since he's running behind one of the best offensive lines in all the football. Then you got Tony Pollard. This is a rookie out of Memphis. Now, Tony Pollard, this is a guy who was a back of the Daryl Henderson, but this guy is extremely fast. So just because he was a back of the Daryl Henderson, don't get that wrong. This guy was extremely fast. He actually averaged more yards per carry than Daryl Henderson, which was a little bit of a surprise. He can also return kicks and punts as well. So this guy is incredibly fast. Then you got Darius Jackson in there. Now for the wide receiver. I'm watching Cedric Wilson. Now, Cedric Wilson last season was a rookie. He came out of Boise State. I was a little bit disappointed because I thought he would have a little bit big, a bigger of an impact than what he did last season, but he rarely touched the field last season. So in this preseason game, I want to see what he's able to do. Had a lot of high expectations for him coming out of Boise State, and I thought he was a pretty solid receiver. Then Tavon Lawson. Now, Tavon Lawson is more of a special teams guy when it comes to returning kicks and punts because of his speed. But in this game, I want to see what he's able to do on the offensive side of the ball. Now on the defense side of the ball for the Cowboys, defense ends. Jalen Jilks and Joe Jackson. I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan, so I'm going to be watching Joe Jackson really closely. This is a guy who's extremely strong. He has an incredible bull rush as well, so I'm going to, going to be keeping my eyes on him. Then Jalen Jilks, the rookie out of Oregon, he's pretty solid there as well. Then at that defensive tackle position, you got a defensive tackle with Tristan Hill out of UCF. Now, Tristan Hill isn't a guy who's going to really – have a big impact when it comes to getting after the passer, but he's a guy who can clog up those run lanes, and he's a guy who gives you high, who is a high-motor guy up front. You kind of want that because then this guy makes a bunch of plays in the backfield of the opposing team when it comes to stopping the run. Then the last play I'm watching for the Dallas Cowboys is cornerback Michael Jackson out of the University of Miami. Now, Michael Jackson, I think he could end up having a solid role in his Dallas Cowboys defense. He's big. He's strong. He's a very physical bump and run corner. He's very good in press coverage. He's also pretty solid in man coverage as well. So he's a really, really physical corner, and I want to see how he does in this game. So the players I'm going to be watching for, the San Francisco 49ers, obviously, like I said earlier, quarterback Nick Mullen and C.J. Beathard, who ends up winning that backup quarterback spot behind Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, in some reports that I read, Nick Mullins is the head guy when it comes to in that battle ahead of C.J. Beathard. He's also ahead of C.J. Beathard on their depth chart according to islands.com. So I'm eager to see if C.J. Beathard is going to be able to kind of make a little bit of a comeback or is he going to remain the third string quarterback behind Nick Mullins. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw one of these guys end up getting traded because both of these guys are pretty serviceable backups. So I could only suppose that whoever loses this backup spot could end up getting traded or maybe if they end up getting released. Then we look at the halfback position. So the 49ers are extremely deep at the halfback position. Like I said earlier, I think they probably have the best halfback group in all of football when you look at how good they are in terms of depth. You got Matt Breida, who at one point was top five in the NFL in rushing yards last season before he ended up suffering that injury, and that kind of derailed him later on down the stretch. But he's a pretty solid halfback. He can also catch some pass out of the backfield, and he's extremely fast and shifty. Then you got Jeffrey Wilson. Jeffrey Wilson is really, really powerful. I mean, this guy hits you with a Bow. He, he'll, he'll knock your chin strap off. Raheem Mozart is pretty solid as well. Then you got Austin Walter. So all four of these halfbacks I'm going to be keeping my eye on behind McKinnon and Tevin Coleman, who I don't think are really going to see that much action. I don't even think um, Jeremy McKinnon is even going to be playing in this game. So these four halfbacks 
all would not make the roster. A couple of these guys are going to end up getting released. It's not because they're bad halfbacks. It's just because you only have so many spots on the team. And I doubt that they go into the season with six halfbacks because I, I doubt that happens. So, I mean, this game is really important for these guys if they're trying to end up remaining on the San Francisco 49ers team. And if they're – because even if you don't make the roster in preseason, not only are you kind of auditioning yourself for the team, but you're auditioning yourself for other teams as well. So, when these guys get released, I strongly, strongly have a strong feeling in my gut that these guys want to end up on another team before week one begins then at the wide receiver position i'm looking at rookie wide receivers jalen hurd and Debo samuel so both of these guys are rookies jalen hurd we already heard about the jalen hurd story he was a halfback for tennessee transferred to baylor changed his position now he's like a hybrid wide receiver tight end so i kind of want to see how he's utilized in that role for the 49ers, and I kind of want to see what he's able to do at the NFL level. Also, Debo Samuel. I thought Debo Samuel was the perfect pick for the 49ers in the second round. Had him going there in my mock draft, my seven-round mock draft a couple of months ago, and lo and behold, he ended up going to the 49ers in the second round. So, eager to see what those two guys do. Then, defense and end Solomon Thomas. Solomon Thomas, at this point in his career, has basically been a bust, and he needs to come out here and show something so we can and get a little bit confident about him. So this is it for this video. My sense of the 49ers versus Dallas Cowboys. Week 1 preseason preview. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section down below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos and content. Thanks for watching.